In this video we will discuss how the recent FDA approval of liposomal bupivacaine for use in popliteal sciatic block may revolutionize the way we manage postoperative pain for foot and ankle procedures while minimizing the reliance of opioids which are often associated with a host of adverse events and the risk of dependency. In the video we will demonstrate a reader's digest information with a great degree of clarity using the findings from Schwartz et al. recent publication in the Clinical Journal of Anesthesiology and we will also discuss the use of Experinol in popliteal block with the co-author of the study Dr. Jeff Gutston who will also share with us the no-nonsense practical clinical observations on how to make Experinol work and what you can expect clinically. Before we get started, be sure to get your hands on Nysora's best-selling Nurblock manual which discusses the techniques of popliteal block used in the studies we are discussing today. Managing post-surgical pain, especially after foot and ankle surgery, presents a unique set of challenges. Traditional opioid medications, while commonly prescribed, may not always effectively manage pain and come with a risk of adverse effects and dependency. And this is where the role of peripheral nerve blocks, particularly the popliteal sciatic nerve block, becomes crucial. These blocks have been shown to offer superior pain control, reduced opioid consumption, and have a high rate of patient satisfaction due to the low incidence of serious complications. The technique of administering popliteal sciatic nerve block has tremendously evolved with ultrasound guidance emerging as a preferred method due to its improved efficacy and reduced requirement for anesthetics. Despite their advantages, however, the duration of analgesia provided by single dose blocks has been a limitation, often necessitating the use of continuous blocks for extended pain relief. However, continuous nerve blocks come with their own set of challenges, including the need for patient education, the risk of infection, more time required to place them, manage them, a cost of the catheters and infusions and the catheter-related issues. But just like continuous nerve block catheters, Expirel is best used by the experts because it requires very precise and different application for success, which may explain why some of the meta-analysis in the past did not find an even greater difference in effectiveness compared to the plain bupivacaine. But let's ask Dr. Gatston, the co-author of the study, about this. Jeff, you have a lot of experience using Expirel. What are some of the most important tips on making the most out of Expirel? If you are one or two fascial planes away from your target with liposome, liposome products, that becomes an issue because you will not get the same effect site concentration of epivacaine at the nerve. All right, but can you give me some examples of what you just described? We see this time to time when someone's a little bit imprecise with their needle tip position for a tap block, say, and they, they put local in the muscle and the tap block just doesn't work. And so you have to be precise when you're using uh, local, local anesthetics that are encapsulated like Expirel. And this is why Expiril liposomal bupivacaine could be a game changer in this scenario. Expiril packs local anesthetics bupivacaine in liposomes to gradually release bupivacaine providing prolonged analgesia. Its approval for postoperative analgesia in popliteal nerve block indication marks a significant milestone offering a long-acting solution for pain control that can potentially eliminate the need of continuous infusion systems and opioids and their associated complications. In the clinical trial conducted in six major medical centers in the United States, Schwartz and colleagues have demonstrated the efficacy of liposomal bupivacaine Expirel, showing a significant reduction in pain intensity and total opioid consumption after the foot surgery, with notable proportion of patients remaining opioid-free during the critical 96-hour period following the procedure. These findings are not only promising for the immediate postoperative period, but also for the days following discharge, a time when patients are managing their pain at home. The extended pain control provided by liposoma bupivacaine could lead to a decrease in opioid prescription, paving the way for opioid-free surgery and recovery. Jeff, can you simplify the data on the duration of Expirel? Can you describe your clinical observations from your practice 
just to give our viewers a bit more pragmatic information. This is a block that does last not just two or three days, but we get consistently five to six days out of these blocks. And, and the reasons to that have to do probably with the perineural sheath and the way that the liposomes are encapsulate or encompassed within that sheath. Uh, but notwithstanding, these blocks tend to last for an extended period of time. All right, but uh, what are the best uses of Expiral? Popliteal sciatic nerve block. And we'll use this for foot and ankle surgery, ankle replacements, ankle fracture repairs, bunionectomies. And it, this is a block that you put that local anesthetic mixture in the popliteal sciatic sheath and it lasts for five or sometimes six days. And so those patients get an enormous amount of relief out of that single injection technique. So we'll use Expirel in our popliteal blocks whenever we want to give a patient a solid three, four, five days of profound analgesia. The implications of these developments extend beyond individual patients' experience, with foot and ankle procedures increasingly being performed in outpatient settings to reduce costs. The ability to offer extended pain control with a single injection without the need for opioids aligns perfectly with the goals of enhancing patient satisfaction and recovery outcomes. But let's go back to Dr. Gatson again. Jeff, can you describe the dynamic of the popliteal block with Expiral clinically? What do you see with regards to its onset, duration, and offset in popliteal block? The first 24 hours is associated with a profound motor and sensory block. Those patients can't move or feel their foot and ankle or calf. And then the motor block tends to wear off and we see the patients about 24 to 36 hours start to wiggle their toes. But the sensory block persists and it will do so out to about day five and then the whole thing wears off. Jeff, in your clinical observations beyond the positive results of this study, how much analgesic medications your patients having foot surgery take after expiral in popliteal block, given that reconstructive foot surgery results in a great deal on postoperative pain. And we see lots and lots of patients who have their block preoperatively, undergo some sedation for their ankle case or foot case, and then never ever take any pain medicines after that. Because by the time that that block is worn off on day five or six, the healing has begun and they just transition to no pain medicines which is incredible when you think about the, the surgical trauma that is involved in fixing an ankle fracture or ankle arthrodesis or one of these major foot and ankle operations. In conclusion, in my opinion, the FDA approval of liposomal bupivacaine for use in popliteal sciatic nerve blocks represents a significant advancement in pain management for foot and ankle surgery patients. With extended pain relief and with reducing the reliance on opioids, Expirel, the liposomal bupivacaine, has the potential to revolutionize the postoperative care, making the recovery process safer, more comfortable, and more efficient for patients. This development with the FDA approval not only highlights the importance of innovation in medical treatments and local anesthetic pharmacology, but also underscores the ongoing efforts to address the opioid crisis by providing effective alternative for pain management with regional anesthesia. I hope you liked the video, and if you found this video useful, please subscribe to our channel and never miss the future ones. Until next time.